from 8th of November until 22nd of November, 173 were killed. 38 of them, they are children under 18. Is it enough to say that we are under occupation? Or this occupation has a special nature, and this nature is apartheid? Shawan Jabarin is the director of Al Haq, the first ever human rights organization established in the Middle East in 1979. Shawan was the first Palestinian prisoner of conscience chosen by Amnesty International. Please welcome the director of Al Haq, Shawan Jabarin. Thank you all for coming and for inviting me to speak on Palestine. Today is the 29th of November, which it means that the General Assembly of the UN issued a decision at that time. It's called the Partition Plan in 1947 for two states in Palestine. After 65 years or 66 years of that date, uh, we have no state. Uh, the other state established and taking over everything and just now we are celebrating. The UN decided to celebrate this day in 1977. That tomorrow we hope to hear that the, and I have no doubt of that, that the resolution will pass in a big majority or large majority in the UN. I have no doubt of that. I think <laughs> I'm sure that more than 150 will vote in favor of this. But the question is what this resolution means to Palestinians. I'm sure that we will not enjoy freedom in the second day, next day. Uh, the occupation will continue. It's on the papers and it has a symbolic meaning in politics, politically speaking, Legally speaking, it has also a meaning legally. It opened the doors before Palestinians to join the international, different international treaties, you know, uh, law treaties like human rights treaties, international humanitarian law treaties, and things like that. The title of our subject is Gaza. I have a concern that the cast lead in 2008, it will repeat again and again and again. What happened in the Gaza this month? It will be. It will not be the end of this operation and this aggression and this attack. Uh, as you know, uh, since 2009, when they stopped their big operation called Cast Lead, which resulted more than 1,400 people, they were killed at that time. Since that time until today, more than 330 people were killed. From 8th of November until 22nd of November, 173 were killed. 38 of them, they are children under 18. And 13 women, they were killed and more than 1,300 were injured. <coughs> I think it's not just the numbers, it's the stories. Each one killed, each one lost his or her house. It's a big and a human story, it's a big story. But the media in general, they don't cover that as a stories. They cover us as a numbers. The story is in the other side, that's. For two reasons, because you know, the media focusing more. Uh, maybe they can get their story in the media more than us. But I appreciate your interest of uh, Palestine. I have no doubt that the situation will change. The public opinion every day change. Occupation means controlling system and destruction system. That's 
what it means. If you visit Palestine, and I encourage all of you to go there, sometimes to hear someone speak about that or to read something, it doesn't give you the exact, you know, uh, sense of the reality on the ground. I encourage all of you to go to visit, to see. When you see things and checkpoints, sometimes you feel that this is for security. It's not. Completely, it's not. This is for political reasons. One of that is more uh, pressure to Palestinians. And another side behind all of these things is political reasons. To isolate areas, to annex it later on, to reduce the numbers of Palestinians, to make their uh, life impossible. That's the case. Just sometimes you think that when you set a checkpoint, this is for security. And if it's for security, you have to encourage people to cross that checkpoint, to search them, to examine that. But the soldiers, most of the time, and mainly at the beginning of this intifada, for the first four years, they used to push people around, to go around and to use the dirty roads. If I hold any illegal things or explosive or something, I will not cross the chic point. I will go around. That's the case. And they used to push all Palestinians to go around and to use the dirty roads. And they didn't allow even vehicles and cars to cross. Because of that, you can see at the beginning. These days, you will not see that. The last three, two, three uh, years, the easiest, you know, this uh, situation. But before, they used to push them. And you can see thousands of people climbing the mountains. Young people, old people with their luggage, uh, babies, all of those, you know. That's the situation. And it, uh, <laughs> it's part of the daily reality in uh, Palestine. Aim behind that is to make their life impossible to take a land, pushing them to concentrate them in a specific area which is called Area A or Area B. Area A or Area B, it amounts 37% of West Bank. And West Bank is you know, small. We are speaking about 5,500 kilometers square. And here when you speak about 37 out of 5,500, it means nothing. And the Israeli, they keep in their hands the other, the rest of the land, because the rest of the land includes natural resources. Water, rich land, like, for instance, the Jordan Valley. Jordan Valley area, it amounts 31% of West Bank. And it's rich, you know, and we called it, it's the vegetable basket or food basket of Palestinians and they keep it in their hands. If you go there, you can see on right side there's a green, you know, and then left side it's completely land without anything. Why? Because they are controlling the water. That's what they want from all of these things. I think they have no proposal for any real peace in Palestine. That's they have their own interpretation of the peace. Peace for them, it means one thing. Push Palestinians outside of their land, taking their land, and if they stay there, they stay there not as citizens or with rights. They stay there, but without rights. Without respecting their dignity, that's the case. A humiliation and checkpoints, it's a daily a practice. It's not just an isolated practice. This is the situation that they are living in. What they will gain from that, I think they will gain nothing. And they will gain uh, the continuing of uh, struggle, the continuing of fighting. Uh, but they think that by doing that, they can you know, uh, keep the situation forever like this. What's going on in Gaza, the siege of Gaza, this is something else. Siege of Gaza is continue, and under international law, and this is not our opinion only, this is also the UN, the ICRC, 
Gaza is still occupied because there is an effective control over Gaza. They control the sea, control air, control, you know, uh, borders. And because of that, we define the occupation as an eff effective control. And they have an effective control over Gaza. That's the case. But they want politically Gaza, I think, they want to push Gaza to the south, to Egypt. That's now the plan. And to reach maybe a ceasefire with Hamas and taking guarantees from the Egyptians to take care with the borders and everything like that. Why? Just to isolate completely Gaza from the rest of the other Palestinian land, the West Bank and things, to kill the Palestinian national interest or national project to build their own state. That's the idea. They don't need and they don't want Gaza. And the main project, it's in West Bank. In West Bank, they have no proposal for any real peace. And there is no way for Palestinians to build their state in West Bank in this situation. That's the case. There is no control on natural resources, land, borders, things like that. And they fragmented the West Bank. They built, you know, the settlements to cut off between the main area. That's the case. And now for Palestinians, they build like tunnels to connect between villages, north, center, south. It's connected even between villages, you know, with the tunnels. And they can cut off West Bank for 12 different areas in five minutes. Just they can put checkpoint or drop a big rock, for instance, from up just down to close the road. That's the case. And now when you go to Palestine, you can see also gates. You can see gates, metal gates. Each village, it has a gate. They can close this gate and they don't allow people, for instance, to leave this village. This is a usual practice. It's like prison. It's not a big prison. If they keep us, for instance, in one area as a big prison, we agree with that. But no. Even the prisons, you know, they divided the prison to another prison. <coughs> the prisons within the prison, the big prison. That's now the case. More than that, Jerusalem. They isolate and they targeted Jerusalem. They have three main, you know, goals. To cut off Jerusalem, and they cut off Jerusalem already, you know, from the rest of West Bank. It's forbidden for Palestinians to go to Jerusalem without a permit. And when you hear a permit, you think that this is an administrative system and things. No, this is a controlling system. It's not easy when you, let me say, apply for a permit to get it next day. No, they refuse. Even they refuse the people, sick people. Just you can imagine that a child with 10 years old has a cancer, and they don't allow a mom to go with him to the hospital in Jerusalem. This has happened. We have documentation. We have cases like this. Just you can imagine that the mom with 80, 90 years old, she wants to go to visit her son in the prison, and they don't allow her, and they respond to the ICRC, the Red Cross, that there is a security reasons behind that. This is also usually practice. This is a daily practice. This is some of these things, you know, just I mentioned now. Jerusalem, they want to isolate Jerusalem. They will change later on the border of municipality of Jerusalem to take out around 150,000 Palestinians and to say that the majority now, they are a Jew and Israel is in Jerusalem. That's the case. And they will annex other settlements to the border of Jerusalem. This is the plan. They're implementing it. And I'm sure that in a few months, one year, two years maximum, they will declare that officially. And now they build the systems, sophisticated systems, which they called terminals. And the term itself, you know, and the word itself, terminals, it means that an international border. This is what you think. You go to international border. This is the term that they use in a wall. For them, a wall, it's like the future border with the Palestinians. This is the aim. And they declared that. 
ציווי לבני, נתניהו and others, they said that clearly. Before they said the wall, it's for security reasons. It's not for security reasons. No, if it's for security reasons, why not going through, you know, the green line? Why just go like the snake in a West Bank? That's the case. Because of that, I'm bringing all of these things to say that Israel has no proposal for a peace. It, during the peace, which called peace talks, four times more they confiscated lands and they expanded settlements. If anyone need a peace, he will not confiscate more lands and build more settlements. That's Beside all of these things, there are roads for settlers. And it's forbidden for Palestinians to use that roads. Here the question is, is it enough to say that we are under occupation? Or this occupation has a special nature. And this nature is apartheid, colonialism, and I think it's a unique occupation, completely it's a unique occupation. And this is what we are studying now, and we studied this, and many other scholars, you know, they studied this, and they said, okay, the frame is an occupation, but this occupation, it's not enough just to define this occupation. You have to speak and to, to, to define these practices, and these practices is an apartheid and colonialism the practices. That's the case. Because of that, I say, they have nothing to talk to the Palestinians on. They want just to keep this process going on. It's called talks. And uh, use this time for their benefits and for their, what the Palestinians can do. I will be very open speaking to you that our leadership lost its popularity. This is a reality. It's lost its popularity because of that. Because the people, they said, you know, where is the peace? And where is the development? Where is, you know, the hopes? And they lost their hope. People, they lost their hope because they see things by their eyes on the ground. They face it every day, it's daily. And for them, PA, it's like emancipability, uh, providing services only, but without power. It's nothing, it has nothing. That's a reality also. Here you know the question. The division between Palestinians also, this is another issue. A human rights situation deteriorate every day. The uh, curve of the deterioration of human rights is going up every day. Uh, killing, land confiscation. Last year, this year, next year, the next time, the main, main <coughs> violation will be the displacement, pushing people outside of their lands, of their homes. Just you can imagine that people living in caves, and this is their lifestyle. They come and they destroy their caves. This has happened in southern side of Hebron. They don't want the people to live in that area. And the people, you know, have been there since so long, even before Israel established. And this is, you know, how they are targeting areas. Now they are targeting Jerusalem to isolate Jerusalem completely, and they cut it off. They target now Jordan Valley, and it's a matter of time to annex officially Jordan Valley. That's the case. And the claim behind that is, this is just for security reasons. And it's not, for two reasons. It's a rich land, and it's also water resources there. And now what they are doing, they're demining, you know, the area, taking, you know, out the mines that they planted after 67, to allow business, you know, to build a new business in the Jordan Valley. This is now the case. 
and they are targeting the southern side of West Bank to cut it off completely, and also behind the wall. Behind the wall, it's a matter of time, and later on they will not allow people also to reach their lands with the permits. This is what happened in 1950, 1951, in northern side of West Bank, near Jenin and Tul Karim. At that time, they used to allow people to go to their property and to their land and to give them permits. After 52, they stopped everything. And they said, you have no right anymore to go to that area. They closed it. And this is what they will do with the wall. We see that, we watch that, we raise our voice, we intervene, we uh, advocate, we go to the UN, EU, every bodies. Unfortunately, there is no political will. Everyone knows that what the Israeli doing, it's crimes. It's completely against, you know, their obligation under the international law, but things going on. Why? There is no pressure. Israel, this is the cheapest occupation in history. They are taking everything and not paying anything. And the others, they are paying also. European, others, you know, when they support even, by supporting, they are maintaining. And for some international companies, it's a business. They go to invest in settlements and things like that. I think Israel now, occupation going also part of the legs. It's not just a political leg and the power and military. It's an economic leg. If this leg doesn't be broken, it will continue. How to broken that? Israel has to pay the price of that. They have not to benefit, you know, and the settlements of products has not to have, you know, uh, markets everywhere. And the people, they have to be aware about all of these things. This is one, you know, part. I will stop until here. I will open the floor for any uh, questions, and thank you. <laughs> the oppressors, they can't continue as an op oppressors forever. And Israel, they depend on power and force. Power and force, it's changeable things in history. The future is for justice. This is what I do believe. Maybe it's a dream, but we have you know, even to keep the dream, you know, like this. Is a future for justice and the future for human rights and what's going on now in the Arab region, I think it gives a good example.